Hey guys, Huang here, and today we're going to be exploring the best spots in Death Valley National Park. Death Valley, despite the name, is a beautiful and unique place with over 3 million acres of land and plenty to see and do. Whether you're a photographer, hiker, or just looking for an adventure, Death Valley has plenty to offer. In this video, I'll also be adding things to know and tips for staying safe throughout the park. Our first stop and my personal favorite is Zabriskie Point. This viewpoint is one of the most popular in the park and for good reason. It offers breathtaking views of the Furnace Creek area and the surrounding badlands. To get there from the parking lot, it's very easy. Just take the Golden Canyon Trailhead, walk a short distance, though uphill, and straight up to the viewpoint. So as you can tell, paved path, fairly uh, easy to walk on. A little steep. Ooh, we haven't even gotten to the top yet. And look, look at this. Oh my goodness, this is, this is absolutely wild. Look at this. Look at this view. This spot is best visited at sunrise or at sunset when the lighting is just right and the colors of the Badlands come to life. The rock formations and the colors here are absolutely stunning and as a photographer, I could spend days here. From this spot, you can hike into the Badlands Loop and onto the Goer Gulch and Golden Canyon Trail to get up and close with these rock formations. Something to know is that the Golden Canyon Trailhead parking area gets very full in the morning and the easier place to park is at the Zabriskie Point parking area and to hike into the canyon that way. As the name Death Valley implies, it's not the most hospitable place towards people. Even in the winter months, it can get quite hot and the nights can get incredibly cold. And in the summer months, oof, don't even get me started on the temperatures there. We're talking well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Fun fact, the hottest temperature ever recorded on earth was here at Furnace Creek in Death Valley on July 10th, 1913, and it was a staggering 134 degrees Fahrenheit. So with that, remember to bring plenty of water and sunscreen. Speaking of water, continuing on the topic of water, our next stop is the Bad Water Basin. This spot is the lowest point in North America and is truly a sight to see. The name Bad Water comes from the water that flows from a spring nearby. However, due to the insane amounts of salt here, the water is quite literally undrinkable, hence Bad Water. The salt flats here are vast and stretch as far as the eye can see. You can walk out onto the flats and explore the area or just take in the view from the boardwalk. This is also a great spot for photography, so don't forget your camera. If it rains, you can create some stunning images as the water turns the ground into a giant mirror on the salt flat and gives you endless possibilities for awesome photos. When there isn't rain, which is the vast majority of the time, you'll essentially just be walking on salt for days. We've wandered a, a fair bit and uh, now it's definitely saltier can feel the texture with like every step this area offers nowhere to sit and no shade at all and being the lowest point in the western hemisphere well below sea level it's not somewhere that you're gonna get comfortable and just remember that the air around here is very, very dry, especially with all the salt. So that's going to be something that you'll be feeling for sure. Again, it's quite hot here all year round, so definitely come prepared. A quick tip for this spot is if you are driving here using Google Maps, when you put in Badwater Basin, you'll be driving down Badwater Road from north to south. Google Maps will sometimes tell you that you have arrived at this location when there is seemingly nothing there. Either you've missed it or you accidentally pass it or it's just non-existent. However, if you keep driving an additional five minutes or so, it will take you to the actual Badwater Basin, which has a parking lot, toilets, and actually looks like a area that you can pull over in. So basically, if you're driving down Google Maps tells you you're there and you don't see anything, just keep going for a bit and you'll find it. Also, one more thing, if you're in the parking lot and you're facing Badwater Basin, if you turn around and look at the mountain behind you, you'll actually see a sign on the mountain that shows you where the sea level actually is. And you can then tell just how far under sea level you actually are, which is a staggering 282 feet below sea level. If you look up at the mountain here, you can see the sea level sign. So, uh, yeah. 
or below. So after staring at salt for days, the next place on our list is the Artist Palette. This place will add some color to your photos. So Artist Palette is on Artist Drive, which is a nine mile loop that takes you through some of the most colorful and unique landscapes in Death Valley. From the colorful hills to the twisting roads, Artist Drive is a must see. Just be sure to drive slowly and enjoy the views because it's beautiful all around. While you're driving about halfway through, you'll see the Artist Palette pullout area. This area in particular is full of oxidized rocks giving the whole entire area a painted feeling. Looking at this area looks like a bunch of paint just got splattered all over the mountain and hence the name Artist Palette. It's not too long of a hike and does provide really cool photo opportunities. So as I said at the beginning of this section, Artist Drive is a nine mile loop. And while that may seem long, that just puts into perspective how big Death Valley actually is. Many of these spots can be quite far away from each other and sometimes hours away that will require some planning beforehand to get to all the spots that you want to most efficiently. Speaking of hours away, the next spot is pretty far out there, but is very unique and very worth it if you're willing to make the drive and that is the racetrack. The playa or dry lake bed where the racetrack is located is a unique and beautiful natural feature. These tracks themselves are fascinating to observe as they are imprinted into the mud by rocks that have been carried along by strong winds, ice, and water. It looks so cool because it looks like these rocks are just racing around the track, hence the name. The surrounding landscape is rugged and awe-inspiring with towering peaks and you can get some amazing photographs with the sailing rocks here. The racetrack is also a great destination for stargazing as the clear dark skies provide an excellent view of the stars and constellations as you are surrounded by mountains blocking out all the light. However, a lot of Death Valley is actually great for stargazing because there's just so much barren land around. So there are just so many places to see in Death Valley and you probably won't have time to cover everything in one day. So you'll probably need a place to stay. That some place could be the Furnace Creek Ranch. This historic ranch is a great place to relax and unwind after a day of exploring. The ranch offers a variety of accommodations from camping to cabins, and there are plenty of activities to keep you entertained from horseback riding to golfing. This ranch will be your oasis in the desert. Moving along to spot number five on our list is the Yubi Hibi Crater. This volcanic crater is over 600 feet deep and half a mile across and is a must see for anyone visiting Death Valley, especially if you're going to the racetrack area because this is along the road. The hike around the rim is easy and offers great views of the surrounding area. Just be prepared to bring a lot of sunscreen and water as it can get very, very hot out here. You can also hike down to the bottom of the crater and it's only about a half mile hike and about 500 feet down. That's pretty cool. But just remember that the hike itself is pretty steep and all that distance that you're going down, you're gonna have to go back up. The trail itself is also not hard rock, but it's actually loose gravel, which makes the hike a bit harder as well. Just picture hiking on sand versus hiking on a sidewalk. The sand definitely takes a toll on you a lot quicker than the sidewalk would. Lastly, one of the most stunning spots in Death Valley is the Mesquite Flat Sand Dunes. This area offers stunning landscapes across the vast sea of sand. The popular activities here include sandboarding and hiking, as well as photography and stargazing. This area has no marked trail, so you will have to create your own adventure. Hiking out to the largest sand dunes will take some time as they are about a mile away from the parking lot. And as we stated before, hiking on sand is much more strenuous than hiking on solid ground. Making a way there. Yeah, we're almost there. There's so much shoe of sand in my shoes. I can feel it with every step. But there's no time to clean them out. Sun setting. We don't have a ton of time. I really want to get this shot. So I think this is it. I think we made it to the tallest point. Have the camera on a tripod. I'm gonna go over there, take some shots real quick. It looks super cool, but man, we made it. So, uh, <laughs> Luke is enjoying himself. We're on a, I don't know if you can tell here, but we're on a dune. So, uh, he's <laughs> too bad you're facing the wrong way. We need to go the other way. <laughs> Woo, look at that! Look at that sky, gorgeous. Whoa. Yeah. I think I carried two sand dunes worth of shoes. Or sand dunes.
The views here are absolutely stunning and so stunning as a matter of fact that they actually use these dunes to film part of Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope. As with all of the park, but especially here because there are no trails, definitely do be careful and watch out for wildlife. There is still plenty of wildlife even in the desert and the most dangerous things out here being poisonous snakes, scorpions, and spiders. So be careful where you go and watch your step. Personally, my advice is to go in the winter or early spring, late fall if possible because the weather is just a lot better and you won't have to worry as much about a lot of the wildlife because it's too cold. That'll make your trip to Death Valley a little more pleasant. That being said, make sure you add Death Valley to your bucket list if you haven't been there already because it's just so unique and absolutely beautiful. The closest major airport to Death Valley is in Las Vegas and is about a two hour drive from the Vegas Strip to Death Valley itself. Again, be prepared to do plenty of driving once you get here because the park itself is very large and bring plenty of water. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for tuning in. And if you have any questions or comments or if you have a favorite place in Death Valley, let me know in the comment section down below and I will see you guys in the next one.